what they say, the, the great, greatest show yeah, on earth. Yeah. And you had the favelas. Oh, and, gosh, yeah. Uh, you, you All know, the, the, the different things. Just the so subject much. matter was just endless, you know. And on the beach itself, I mean, you had guys carrying big barrels of liquid to sell you a drink, you know, mm. and they'd come around uh, uh, trying to sell you a, uh, they'd give you the paper cup and you'd they'd fill it for you and charge you a, a less than a buck, I guess. And e yeah. each Samba school actually had the different outfits which represented their school. So I guess yeah. people from Rio, you know, they say, you know, they say, oh, that, oh, that, she's from so-and-so yes, school. Yes. And, you know, we didn't realize that at the time, but uh, it's and quite then, of fascinating. Course, when, the, when the carnival uh, came close, hmm. uh, we we decided we had to take the children to the carnival. So one night we the bought the tickets for the Samba Drome. Oh, yes. And that is like nothing else on earth. I <laughs> yeah, mean, yeah. it's like <laughs> the parade is like... Uh, it goes on for about three or four hours, non-stop parade. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and it's just and hours. outfits and, and, and girls uh, practically naked, you know, just with like basic, just little, what do they call those little leotard things on them and yes, everything. Yeah, just amazing. Yeah. And, and feathers and... and yeah, and, this, Oh, uh, my God, it was just... Actually, a lot of heavy headdresses. Heavy, I, they must have weighed a ton oh, of these outfits gosh. that they wore. But you know? incredible mm. dancing and music. Sure, and but because the weather is so great... I mean, yeah. they could be with hardly any clothes on with all these outfits over the top of them till about four in the morning. You know? Well, I think it mm. never stops. But yeah. And Tala and Anton, they thought they it was... They had outfits on the They had their we, little outfits. We made them, we bought them little <laughs> yeah. outfits. They so were they part were, of it. They felt like they were a part of it. And and they had the bleacher seats, all <laughs> yeah. that, you know. Yeah. And We were quite close, actually. Yeah. They were spellbound. They spellbound, just couldn't... Yeah. Well, yeah. the Imagine. children don't say a word during but all the, that. The thing is, I took photographs. I was going to say. The problem was... Yeah. The problem was you couldn't get close enough to get yeah. really good photographs. Yeah. So I ended up using certain studies from books that we found, you know, right. of the carnival for some of the subject matter. But uh, the kids, anyway, on the way home, of course, we'd get this taxi to go home. And, of course, this guy, he went through every red light he could find. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I kept going, ooh. And you know what? And he yeah. said, "No, no, it's okay. There's nobody. There's yeah. nobody." He says, "If yeah. there's nobody, if there's it's nobody, okay. you keep going." I said, "Okay." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay. And I crazy. And we always go back to uh, DiCaprio's film. You know, this is Africa. We say, "This is real." This is real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we used to yeah. say yeah. that. So it is. Well, this Just, is real. Yeah, you go with the flow or forget it. <laughs> yeah. So, but before we leave Rio, I just wanted to mention about Fred, right? Because I forgot, oh, when yeah. we were in Hawaii... Yeah, with, I forgot. With, our Fred, you yes. Know, the, mm. Our Fred, yeah. yeah. The character so, Fred, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. So I I, uh, I have forgot to mention one thing because it was it was important, you know, to us. Well, and, when we were in Rio, you sent a T-shirt to him. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. but just before yeah. that, I just wanted to say about the Kung Fu. Just oh, quickly. Yeah, okay. So, okay. so when we're on, when Paul's on the promenade in Waikiki, then Fred says, hey, do you ever watch Kung Fu on Tuesday night? So Paul says, well, we could. Do you want to come Tuesdays for dinner? So mm. Fred used to come sitting cross-legged on the floor, which we all ended up cross-legged on the floor yeah. with the coffee table. Mm. And he had dinner with us once a week. And then, you know, because he liked to spend all his money in the first two weeks, yes. he said, mm. I'm going to make you guys dinner once. It was only once a month. And he would buy all this stuff. Tons and of I'd, seafood. Yeah. And I'd say, please, Fred, you know. Oh, whatever. Anyways, uh, so I send him from Rio. Yeah. You, you know, I would send him some little gifts from time to time. But this was only like a year later. I send him a, a T-shirt or whatever. So he had my address. And we get back a card with two $10 bills <laughs> for Tala and Anton. Aww. And, you know, you know, he's a street person with nothing. Yeah. You know, so it's so kind. So of, hard, yeah, and that Aww. was the last of... Fred, nice guy, he, yeah. yeah. And he passed by the time we went back to yeah. Hawaii. We found one. There are yeah, some people so like that, pretty... you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. there are. Yeah. Gives you gives you faith, doesn't it? So from Rio, back home via via, via where did we go to? The Dominican Republic. First Dominican Republic. Just two weeks with mm. Varig. Of course, Varig, the uh, the airline, the, the Brazilian airline is not like any other airline. Oh yes. We didn't have to put our seatbelts on or anything. In fact, the plane, 
the play mm. was moving and going off before any stewardess mentioned anything about mm. fasten your seatbelts. Actually, it's sort of like the Mexican. Oh, yeah, it was pretty yeah. rough. Pretty so easy. we went with the Brazilian airlines to uh, Dominican Republic. Mm. And we stayed there yeah, we for a, a week and a half, I think it was, 10 two days, weeks. two weeks. Yeah. On, uh, just and that was, it got, that was good because it was introducing back into the Spanish. Yeah. So we have, for me, it was great. And Joanne, we were able to feel completely Well, I actually didn't there. paint there, Paul. You must have I didn't paint two in weeks. No, I didn't paint. Holiday. It was actually a holiday, was it? Th- yes. Then we're back. And did you have all your paintings in tow at this point? Like with you? Yes. You yes. did, yeah. Yes, I had a big mm. roll of paintings. Massive. 90? Yeah, I mean, did you say 90 paintings? 90, 90 yeah. paintings. Did you have them with you? Tubes. Yeah. yeah. Not all of them. We chipped some back. We ah, must have shipped some We shipped back. some back. But I'm we had worried a, about shipping. We did. I was I'm afraid of shipping, yeah. But we did ship it through a shipping company and they got yeah, back all right. Yeah, we must have done that. But yeah. I did have an awful lot still in a big, big roll. Yeah. Because uh, they were all different sizes. Yeah. I think the biggest at that time was three feet by four feet. Yeah. But he had a okay. lot. I had of, a lot of small yeah, ones, which yeah, were 18 by small. 20, which weren't rolled. They were just flat. Yeah. So I could have about 50 paintings just yeah. in a yeah, wad, was, you know, oh, yeah. of smaller ones. Okay. And so we're back so, to back so to Vancouver. Left, left Miami. Back to Vancouver with, uh, well, the intention then, of course, we knew I mean, we always know what we're going to do, Paul, you see. Yeah. We do not know, but we yeah. do know. Well, I always so, know after you tell me. <laughs> so <laughs> six months six months back in Vancouver, yeah. uh, I said to Paul, you know, this would be the last year before the kids start real school. Hmm. I mean, for us, we did have the opportunity, and so we took advantage of it like... You know, contrary, people say, oh, how can you have children? Of course you can. And the first six years is the easiest because they're not at school yet. Indeed. So uh, Tala was going to start French immersion as soon as she came back from, uh, like, after the six months, we go back to Spain, Basque country for one year, right? And I said to Paul, if you want to introduce the kids to the Basque country, to the Spanish language, all of that, we have that one year that we can take advantage of now. Okay. So the the thing we did when we got back, I mean, we're working as usual, we're preparing for the Rio de Janeiro show, and also we've got the expo interview that ah. I think we do that as soon as we get back. That's right. Yeah. Ah. And yeah, and, and and then that takes. Uh, in uh, where we go and they say look we got 700 square feet you've had all that experience at De La Mano in Arizona Mm. and that was like a mammoth project because you had to man it 12 hours a day right Uh, six months for six months six months wow so I didn't I was after just doing something for a Garrett one nobody else but anyways I said oh okay Okay, okay, I'll see if I can find... Uh, mm, I, did. I found uh, the, the four other artisans, well, the sculptor, George Merbos, yeah, yeah. right? And then we had three other, the potter and all that. So that that was all interesting, and we formed this group that would take over the 700 square feet. The thing is, they were giving us a deal where we would only have to pay rent once we entered Expo, nothing in advance, yeah, and and that, that, that did change later, but so we left my father in charge for that year, where uh, you know he was in charge of the meetings and getting together and working with Expo. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Agatha Art Chronicles, which was presented, recorded and edited by me, Ed Holskin. It was produced by Tala Agatha and myself, and the music was provided by Hoskin and Clark. Join us next time to find out how the next European trip went.